Well, good evening. I'm Kalen Fretz, and as uh, Rebecca mentioned, I'm running for U.S. Congress here in Florida's 1st District. I'd like to thank David and Rebecca for all that they've done uh, for freedom in this area, um, as well as, you know, for, for my campaign, and they've just really done a, a, a great job in this area. Um, tonight, I'd like to speak briefly with you on the topic of free speech zones. From the late 18th century, when our country was founded until relatively recently, there was only one free speech zone that U.S. citizens had to worry about. It was called the United States. Um, the whole concept of a free speech zone is on its face self-contradictory and preposterous. If one must be within dictated confines to express a freedom, then one is not truly free. While the idea has been around in the U.S. Uh, for a few decades now in limited forms, it has been greatly expanded just since the turn of the millennium. Now the prevailing standard is that in order to speak your mind or protest in public taxpayer-funded areas, from universities to sidewalks, you must request permission from the government and restrict yourself to the areas they decide upon. This runs perpendicular to the freedom our country was founded upon. Take, for example, the protest zones at this year's Republican National Convention in Tampa. There were a couple such zones where if you had something important to convey, you were granted the opportunity to do so, but only at the specified times. The rest of the city of Tampa was off limits to free speech or a no free speech zone. This means the citizens of Tampa who may have no problem expressing their freedom of speech on an average day were arbitrarily barred from doing so for this particular week. Of course, freedom of speech means nothing when nobody can see or hear what you have to say. Governments and public institutions have a tendency to relegate these protest zones uh, to areas where they are out of sight and out of mind. Now, you may have heard of H.R. 347. This is at the federal level. The, uh, quote, Federal Restricted Buildings and Grounds Improvement Act of 2011. What this bill does is criminalize the First Amendment if you are in an area where individuals under Secret Service protection are temporarily located, even if you don't know you're committing a crime. Of course, who tend to require Secret Service protection? Politicians. So your politicians in U.S. Congress passed a bill making it illegal for you to express your freedom of speech or protest in the same area as them if they are under Secret Service protection. H.R. 347 passed the U.S. House of Representatives by a bipartisan vote of 399 to 3, including your own U.S. Representative Jeff Miller. This ought to infuriate you. It does. Now, I'm going to say something which will probably shock you. The U.S. Constitution does not guarantee freedom of speech. Now, why would I say that? Because a document, even one as visionary and revolutionary as the U.S. Constitution, cannot guarantee anything. The Constitution merely recognizes your natural right as a free human being to freedom of speech, freedom of religion, freedom of association, freedom to own and bear firearms, freedom to exercise dominion over your body and your property, so long as you harm no one else. These rights are yours from the time you're born to the time you die. They are not given and they cannot be taken away, but they can be infringed upon, most often by governments. The Constitution recognizes these rights, but it is you who must guarantee them. So how do you secure these rights? You start by drawing a line in the sand. You must decide for yourself at what point you will cease complying with illegal, unconstitutional, and immoral infringements on your natural rights, whatever the cost. You must exercise these rights and familiar, familiarize yourself with them and their nature and educate your family and others so that they won't be forgotten by future generations. And of course, you must refuse to reelect politicians who repeatedly insist on violating your natural rights, as the majority of those now in Congress, including your U.S. Representative, have done. 
I'd like to thank you for your time. Uh, I'd like you to help me get this mes message to Congress. And if any of you would like to uh, help volunteer with the Frets for Congress campaign, you can talk to me or my campaign manager, Pete Bloom, in the back. And I, uh, I hope you'll visit my website, fretsforcongress.com, and I want to thank you for your time.